For two decades, my next guests have been working each other up one side of a frenzy and down the other in one of Australia's most successful comedy marriages. Here's just a taste of their work. I don't want to die! Frank, you're not going to die. You're not going to. I can't. I can't die! Frank, just calm down. You're not going to die. Not yet! I, I can't go! Frank, you're not going to die! Sadly, they recently announced they're about to go their own separate ways. To find out just who's been unfaithful to who, please welcome Colin Lane and Frank Woodley, better known as Lano and Woodley. Welcome, gentlemen. Hello, Mr. Denton. How are you? Don't be formal with me, please. All right. It'll, it'll ruin the whole thing. Why do you think the act's been so successful? Because um, um, we went to Germany in the early 80s and we ripped off all this material. <laughs> <laughs> no. 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 We didn't. No. Um, oh, I don't. All those don't. fabulous German funny yeah, acts. I don't know why I thought of Germany. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, uh, I think I because. The relationship is very uh, clear, you know. The uh, we're, we're friends. We you we, stumbled over that. Oh, friends. friends. <laughs> no, on stage yes. we're friends. Oh, Off yes. stage enemies. Yes. Um, <laughs> no, the relationship is very clear. There's a high status. There's low status. But there's an affection between us. There's a. <laughs> uh, and people, people like the actual interaction and the conflict between the between the characters. I think. You know, it's like rela our relationships with other people, whether it's um, like the one-on-one -on -one intense relationships, whether it's siblings or like you, you described it as a marriage or um, it might be parent-child or um, even, you know, friends, that's kind of the most important thing we do as people, I reckon, is that intense one-on-one -on -one relationship. And there's, in every relationship there is a kind of power struggle of sorts, you know, or there's some sort of... Um, status. Yeah, there's a status relationship, so I think people really respond to it because it, it evokes that, you know, that feeling. Yeah, that thing we're going through every day at work and yeah. at home and things like that. Yeah. This is my moment now, so please, this is my status. <laughs> oh, right, right. right. Sorry. I'm, sure. I'm... I'm... <laughs> <laughs> Teach us, wise one. <laughs> Teach us. Are Teach you... us how to do an interview show after we split up. <laughs> Teach us. <laughs> Teach us. <laughs> Well, first Teach us how to get Antonio Banderas onto our show. <laughs> well, first of all, you're the right height. <laughs> <laughs> can we go back and we do the... In 1994, <laughs> yep. you won the Perrier Award, which is like the, the Oscar for comedy. And it was a bit of a surprise uh, to a lot of other comics that you won it. What was the experience like? <laughs> Uh, what do you mean? Uh, surprise uh, because we were shit? Or no, um, because... no, no, surprise because you were these... Yes. No, uh, surprise because you were these Aussie interlopers who nobody really knew who got yes, over to Edinburgh. Yes, it was yet. surprising for the comedy fraternity in England. So, yes, it was our first trip to Edinburgh as a duo. Oh, well, first trip to Edinburgh, really, at all. And, uh, and so it was not the popular choice. That's for sure. When you say not popular, how did you know it wasn't popular? Um, was it the booing? I think it was the booing. <laughs> I think it was no, the bashing. it wasn't the booing, booing. the bashings. <laughs> um, and, and the stabbing really tops it off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, I, it, I, wasn't, it wasn't expected. And also we weren't known even that well, even though this was by the end of the fe festival. So much so that two of our friends got into the Perrier party saying that they were us. <laughs> And then when so we, we got to the, we in. couldn't get in. <laughs> but oh. it was kind of amazing that we actually won. It was it was you know it was a huge thrill and a huge surprise at the same time. We probably wouldn't have done the TV series if no, it wasn't for having won the period that the so year before. It made a significant difference. Yeah, yeah. We've got some right. footage here from the Adventures of Lano and Woodley of uh, one of the many stunts uh, that you've done. This involving a wardrobe. So you coming down? <laughs> I'm going to count to three. 
And if you're not down, I'm going to get you down myself. One. What? Two. What? Three. What? What are you doing, Carl? Come on. Come on. No, come, come on. Come on. The physical work you do is actually very impressive. Has it ever gone wrong? There was. I remember we used to do a thing with a tray where I, I had a sleeping mask on, and Cole would put um, like a a metal tray into the into the sleeping mask and stretch it back and let go of it, and it hit me in the forehead, you know. And um, one night, I don't know if I just wasn't concentrating or if he wasn't concentrating, but. You know, obviously, a bit like, you know, hitting a, a soccer ball or something. If you get it right flat on your forehead there, you know, it's fine. But for some reason, I looked up at the wrong time or something. <laughs> it just hit me straight in the face like that. And um, I don't know, I don't know if the bone is thicker there or whatever, but I was a little bit concussed. And I realised that it had affected me when I went to get some money out of the auto teller after the show. And instead of using my, my key card, I was actually using my house keys <laughs> to try to get in. I thought, is this a very good way to make a living? You know? So is he there... often comes up with those ideas where if I'm late to a rehearsal, yeah. he says, yeah, I came up with a great idea today. It, it involves a baseball bat. I know you bought a, a frying pan, I think, or something with you yes. today, because I'm pleased about that. Cause See, this I... one, yeah. see this. This one, no. Oh. Ow. <laughs> See, even because I'm on telly, I thought I'd bang myself a little bit harder than I should have. And it really, that's not good at all. Don't do it. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so that's not, that's not a good one. But this, yes. this is not bad. See, this is quite, sounds good. <laughs> See? Yes. And, uh... I mean, it's got a good look. It looks a little bit heavy, and uh, I can, you know, make it sound like I'm really hurting him, but, but basically. The, the hardest thing, though, is to not flinch. But, oh, of course, I know it's coming. You know, so I'm sitting there sort of trying to act relaxed, just going... <laughs> <laughs> and it's very difficult. It's like a, you, you, there's, I think there's quite a bit of the human mind dedicated to try and not get hit in the head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Entire load. Yeah, I think. Can we, can we put yeah. it to the test? Yeah. Cole? That'd be uh, great. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Do you want to put it to the test? go and stand behind Frank? Sure. And, uh, <laughs> Frank, I'll just ask you a question. I let's, really let's think you need, to, this. you need to learn from experience. <laughs> no, no, I'm fine. <laughs> I, let's just, we'll, we'll relax with it. And Cole, in your own time. Sure. Yeah, you just okay. enjoy yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Knock yourself out. Cole. Knock myself out. Yeah, by, that's right. By knocking him out. Yes. <laughs> Frank, I understand you're into meditation. <laughs> really? Yes. What? <laughs> what? Tell me about meditation, what it does for you. Well, the most important thing in meditation, it's, it's a great oh. thing to... to uh... <laughs> 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 I don't... <laughs> I don't know if I flinched or not, but, but that was good. Yeah. I want to talk about the, the, the comic influences for you, uh, starting with you, Cole, which is uh, Maxwell Smart. Why yeah. Max? Oh, I used to watch Get Smart all the time as a kid. Um, Get Smart, The Goodies, the, those sorts of shows. My, my favourite Maxwell Smart moment, I don't know... <laughs> I don't know if, if people are probably just going, yeah, it's OK. I don't know why, but I absolutely love this, where Max is undercover as a ballet dancer at some um, school Morovian. in... Morovian. Morovian Institute it? or something. Mor right, one of those. that's, that's um, you know, actually a chaos front. Mm. And then this guy comes in at the end and Max is going, and he's going he's to sign a contract. And Max goes, don't sign it, it's a trap. And the guy who's the chaos agent who heads the ballet school says, don't listen to him, he's just a dancer. And Max goes, I'm not a dancer, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a control agent. I'm not a dancer, I'll prove to you I'm not a dancer. Look, look. <laughs> Maybe I am a dancer. <laughs> I love that. I love it. When did you guys uh, first realise that you could make other people laugh? Or was it the classic school thing, Cole? Uh, 
No, it was just a complete fluke. We met uh, at uh, this theatre called St Martin's in Melbourne and I was doing a teaching degree. Uh, he could be teaching our young. <laughs> How scary is that? <laughs> um, I've got an assignment for you. Um, but I was doing a teaching degree before the days of Hex, so I was on the 10-year plan. It was a four-year course. But um, Frank was working in a sandwich shop, I think. It was an Indian takeaway. Actually. Indian takeaway. Oh, sorry, mate. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> very important. Very important. I'm you glad know, you mentioned it. Yeah. The only thing I remember from the Indian takeaway is once a guy came in and said, um, him and his wife came in. This is true. I don't know. Is this the only reason funny. you corrected me so you could get this story in? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <you. laughs> well, it's not a great story, but it's just that he came in and he said, um, uh, <laughs> um, his wife actually said to him, um, I think we've got a little bit too much. And he said, um, don't worry. This is true. Uh, you know, he said, don't worry. What we don't eat, we can smear on our bodies. <laughs> Which, I don't know if he was joking or not. But so, uh, there was comedy in the Indian takeaway. That's well. why he calls it dull. <laughs> yeah, right. Dull. Now, what I actually meant was, when, yes. you, when you were at school, when you were kids, right. were, were you funny kids? Uh, I used to get thrown out of class a lot for just making smart aleck remarks. That did happened you, you all know, the time. Did your teacher ever say, you know, because the teachers don't really... Um, understand that comedy is a skill like any other that maybe they should be promoting because it's a trade. So that you can, it's a trade that yes. you know. Did they ever say to you, Colin Lane, this this class has been going for forty five minutes and you have not made one smart ass remark? <laughs> How do you expect to get you know a job as a comedian when you leave? But it's but even though you're, I mean, everybody is funny. Everybody, you go out with a group of friends for dinner. You're having a dinner party for six people, eight people, whatever. One or two people at that table will make the other people piss themselves. And everybody makes their relatives laugh, their families laugh. And so we probably did that when we were kids, but the actual step into actually doing it in front of people, that's just a complete fluke, really. That's, I don't think that we... Well, I, I, I didn't have a lifelong ambition to be a comedian and hit Frank with a blunt <laughs> instrument. You know, that was just a... You, circumstances just... And fate just puts you together and... My earliest memory of being funny is um, in grade two running the, the relay and I was the fourth member in, in the relay and I, I can quite vividly remember running down the track and realising that our team wasn't going to win, you know, or get a place or anything and I, w I had this kind of flash where I thought, well, I can try as hard as I can and l lose but sort of maintain my self-respect or I could just start playing the baton like it's a flute <laughs> and sort of dance down. And I went the flute option. Yeah. It worked a treat. You know, and pretty much I have ever since. I reckon I probably wouldn't be a comedian if I was a faster runner. <laughs> We've got some uh, footage here of you two uh, from the adventures of Lano and Woodley. In fact, that's all we have footage from. Oh. Well, I've got another date with Jenny tonight, so I better be off. No. No, don't go, Cole. I don't want you to go. I don't want you to go. <laughs> Why do you have to go again? I don't want you to go. 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 You do have uh, a fantastic chemistry on stage. Was it like that when you met? Uh, the chemistry I is right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the chemistry is there. Uh, I remember somebody in a, in a review we got, and it said this was very early on. Thank you, Ross Wilson. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, very early on, we got a, <laughs> a review that said they can read each other's minds, which is an added bonus. 
And I just thought that was the most bizarre sentence I'd ever heard. Like, imagine if you could read somebody's mind. <laughs> And you just considered it an added bonus. <laughs> you didn't think it was the most incredible thing in a human relationship. I can read his mind like it is mine, which is an added bonus. <laughs> but so, yeah, we must have all just very... I think we're very lucky because... I think it was the first time I met you that I was a little bit annoyed that the first show that where we met, I had to go through a six-stage audition process to get into the show, but Frank just walked in because I think he knew the director's brother or something. <laughs> I, th I thought, who is this, who is this guy? Because when I met Frank, I think he was only 17 as well, so... You described it like a marriage. You've been so close to each other for 20 years. I mean, when you go home to your partners, are you somehow still in a room? What's he talking about? <laughs> in, in, a, in a metaphorical sense... When I go sense. home, I'm still in the room. <laughs> he means when me. I, oh, you. Oh, he you. He doesn't, no. He doesn't mean when <laughs> you go home, I used to... <laughs> he means, do you, you feel my presence, presence there? there? Yeah. Yes. Right. In a kind it's of a, a metaphysical... <laughs> right. In a... I actually right. did mean that first question, though. What when was you go that home, are you question? actually in the room? I'm actually in the room when I go home, yes. But Frank's not in the room. No, no. But then when he goes home, he's in the room. And at the moment, we're all in the room. OK? We're all in the room. That's really beautiful. If you know what I mean. Because <laughs> I don't know what he means. Uh, I'm a I, little confused. I, Which room are you in when I'm listening? I want to be in the quiet room, <laughs> right, yes. I think. I, th I think that there's a, a line that you cross when you're doing showing off for a living that it goes from complete and utter fluke and fun to being work. When you get on stage, that's when you're working and having a fantastic time, but then when you go home, it's kind of... it's all over and you deal with kind of day-to-day -day issues. So, I mean, I don't dream about him. Um, <laughs> anymore. Um, <laughs> I mean, you know, he, he doesn't have a good sense of time or punctuality or, you know, has certain liberal attitudes towards personal hygiene sometimes. <laughs> I just think you it's know, a little overrated. A so, little you know, bit. it's funny, you know how between, between men um, there's certain protocols calls of how sort of affectionate or intimate, you know, you can be. And uh, me and Cole are just the same like that, you know. We'll um, probably over the years, if something really special or significant happens, like a wedding or, um, you know, we'll have a hug then. But generally we don't hug each other when, when we see each other. And, um, we, you know, we've got that sort of distance. But it's quite bizarre because there's a gag that we do in our show that's a real winner that we've done over and over and over again where Cole, I'm annoying Cole, and he goes, don't you ever touch me again. And he just holds his finger like that, and then I go... <laughs> and suck his finger. So I've sucked Cole's finger, like, you know, 10,000 times, this incredibly intimate act. And, um, but it's, it's within the constraints of the show, you know, so I'm just hoping that when we split up, I'll still be able to come over and suck that. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'll miss that. The thing is, though, uh, as you know, very, very few comedy duos break up and make it individually. That's the history of comedy. Oh. Uh, which one is it going to be? <laughs> which one is it going to be? But you do have this wonderful relationship, both with your audience and on stage. Are you scared at the thought of splitting what might happen yeah it is it is scary but it's it's exciting as well it's exciting to be able to choose when you finish something which is we're very f fortunate to be able to do that to actually s to choose when we think that it should end rather than other people or outside influences even though we've been successful at it for the last 20 years and we've had a great time there's always that feeling that somebody's going to come up and tap you on the shoulder and go, guys, you're not actually that funny. It's all been a ruse. You know, everybody in Australia has just been taking the piss out of you. It's been okay? like the Truman Show. It's or been something. the Truman Show. You're not actually. So if you come back after five or ten years, is it people are just going to go? It's some. I'm, what I'm trying to say is maybe it's just left best 
in the memory. Because if you try and resurrect something, people start to kind of go, oh, actually, it wasn't as good as I remembered. Who knows what happens in 10 years' time? I might ring him going, Frank, come on, please. <laughs> come on. Come on, let's do it one more time. Come on. So, but it's... It just feels more, right, though. It more does romantic feel like it's the right and time. much more dignified if you just say, I reckon that probably would be it. And I, I think, you know, uh, hopefully we'll just do something really... something fresh and exciting and new and, you know, it's not like... It's going to be bad, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong here? Yeah. Look, no, as a know. genuine fan, thank you for all the laughs over the years. Leno and Woodley, appreciate it. Thank you, thank Andrew. You, Andrew. Thank you very much. Thank you.